Welcome to the talk show from Easy Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. And today we'll discuss about the issues, very important issues in Bangladesh now at this very moment. That is geopolitics, election, and what the next. And to suit the very purposes, we have invited two guests. They are Ambassador Humayun Kabir and Diplomatic Analyst. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you Other much. being Ambassador Shafiullah. He is also a political analyst. Thank well, you. Ambassador Humayun Kabir, you know very well that the Bangladesh at this very moment has become a hot spot of geopolitics. Geopolitics <coughs> and politics in Bangladesh and election. How do you relate all these things? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, I should appreciate your initiative in just inviting us for very contemporary for discussion on this very contemporary uh, issue. Now, responding to your question, I have got a couple of comments. Number one is, the election should be, as a dignified nation, should be our internal matter, and it should be a routine thing. Now, unfortunately, uh, maybe due to our defi systemic deficiencies, we are seeing that our friends are talking about elections, talking about uh, what is their expectation, and so on and so forth. Nothing wrong in that, because they are our partners, I understand, that they can have some observation on that. And I can tell you, in, 19, in 2008, when we had one of the best elections in recent years, we got a lot of appreciation from the international community. They were so happy. They were saying, they were asking, inquiring from us, how could such a wonderful election can take place where 87% of voters cast their votes? So we had to explain positives to our friends. So that was a time of pride. And I think, that should be the usual pattern of our relationship or our election and then the expected outcome that should come from that. But unfortunately this time I think it's not there. We are not there. There are still some questions. Uh, the, the, our friends are advising us, some positive, some negatives. Uh, I think this is not a comfortable situation for us as a dignified nation because we fought for our independence and we stood for our dignity. <coughs> and I think that should be the North Star in our uh, I would say livelihood or in our uh, national uh, uh, destiny. So we should always prioritize our dignity as the number one issue. So from that point of view, I'm not very comfortable others advising us about how to do it. But anyway, now we know where we are. The election process is on. Some parties are participating, others are not. A lot of questions are there. How this would be resolved, we don't know yet. But from my personal point of view, as an optimist, I still hope that it would be an election free, fair, inclusive, uh, and credible election. So here I think that not only election, election is one entry point into the larger context of democratic governance. So we have to do a lot of things uh, to really streamline or really, I should say, make our democracy lively, participatory, and f futuristic. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Humayun Kabir, <coughs> you have uh, highlighted so many things within the short time. Ambassador Shafiullah, you listen to Ambassador Humayun Kabir, and he emphasized elections should be free, fair, and credible. It is a saying, but what are the real practice here? How can it be? Uh, thank you. <clears throat> election uh, presupposes free, fair, uh, participatory, and violence free. That is the basic condition of a democratic election in a democratic country. So we moved very far away from the promise we made to this nation in 1971. We fought for democracy, gave blood for democracy, and it should be the successive generations of Bangladesh should uphold this promise uh, uh, of 1971. I'm very glad that you made this program a promising Bangladesh. That means our hope is not lost. Still there is hope for us. Whatever happened, happening now, it is just simply a democratic, democratic deficiency in Bangladesh polity that drove us nowhere. Our politicians lost their vision and the 
because of the personal personal uh, gains, I should say, and more so, I should say that we lost vision from two-party politics to two dynastic politics. We entered into a two-family system politics in Bangladesh. That's why you see uh, we move in the straight line. Uh, there is no accommodation. Uh, there is a the backlog of history behind the two families, and uh, that two families guiding this politics of this nation. So that is the. Uh, thing which uh, uh, often we come at a very very explosive uh, nature of uh, society uh, that should not have been here. Such a homogeneous country with a background of elections from British days. You see, there were Union Council, Union Board elections, there the Jilla Board elections, Panchayat system. Mm -hmm. So this is election is a, about a century old system in this uh, country. So election always means a fair election, participatory election, violence free election. It is a, uh, in Bangla we call Utsob. It's a, it's a big ceremony. It's a, so that is, because of the political uh, lack of frustratedness, we come to this mess. Now, uh, as my dear colleague Humayun said that uh, uh, our friends are talking. You see, talking loudly. Now, Bangladesh election become a, something very uh, unusual because that the American election, they, it evokes attention globally. Mm. But it is small Bangladesh, which is at the corner of the world. In the map, nobody finds Bangladesh, where is Bangladesh. That, that, that become a news. And uh, people say now that we are watching you. You are under watch. So uh, we got attention under wrong reason, not for good reason. See, that is unfortunate for us. After 52 years uh, of Bangladesh and uh, such an enlightened society should lost the way of how to elect their uh, the next government. How yeah. election can be credible? Election is? Can be made credible. Okay. Once upon a time, is, I, mm, I am with we do not Sam yeah, Mindy, you say right. election right. means free fair uh, all the yeah. time. We have the, all the, the question backgrounds. of credibility arises yeah. during this time. It is, it is a, a very uh, an easy, easy answer to this because I said uh, because of this, this 2000 uh, 14 and 2018 elections are behind us, so we are going to have another kind of election uh, as of now. It could be made credible only if the rule of the, the game we, we follow, that means free, fair and democratic election. And it, is, uh, it is the government who will set the, uh, the environment for such election. Now, it is up to them to uh, release the people who were taken to the custody from 28 uh, October. Uh, thousands of people are taken uh, to, to custody, they are opposition uh, uh, members. They have to free them. They have to come to uh, an understanding with the, with the major political parties mm -hmm. uh, the, about the date of election, about the modality of elections. So this is the only way out peacefully to have elections. Otherwise, uh, it will be a volatile situation. Uh, at one point, maybe government mm -hmm. may lose uh, control over the, of the society, of the, of the country. Thank you that very much. That is our apprehension, because the way now we see it, uh, unilateral uh, elections, and government is now, the, if you look to the uh, speeches of the, the leaders or of the media, with the largely uh, uh, to the line of the government, it is going to be in later elections, which is, will be a, a dangerous consequence for, for the Bangladesh. Uh, and we do not deserve this thing. So it is up to the government to set the, uh, the uh, rule for the e election, and they have to rethink that their way, the way they are leading the uh, country to the election, it is not the way to lead the election. It have to change the course of election to the fair election, which will be acceptable to the people of Bangladesh. Well, I do not say about the America or other countries. And I am a voter. I like to see that I, I can go safely to my uh, election booth. I can safely cast my vote and my vote is, is counted. Uh, counted. So this much is the expectation of the, of the citizen. It is the duty of the government to set this thing right. Not the election commission. Thank you very much. Ambassador Humayun Kabir.
Ambassador Shafiullah believes the election should be free, fair and credible. From his standpoint, he analyzed the whole thing. My question to you, the concept of credibility is a very, very big question. How can it be ensured under the circumstances going on? Well, thank you once again, but <laughs> we are not talking about the current situation. We are talking about what should have been done or what could have been done. Yes. Because as Ambassador <laughs> Shafiq Lohai has mentioned rightly, democracy has a, a kind of a set of values that we have to accept, that it should be inclusive in nature. Even if, if I differ with the other side, we must talk, we must come together, find a common ground. So that's one. Second thing is, the people should have that choice. People should decide who should be given the responsibility to run the country for another round, say five years. So here, we have to accept the fact that we have to have an inclusive system where everybody can come, talk, and find a common ground. They can sort out their differences through peaceful discussion. That value has to be there and also the practice. The second area I said, the people, Ambassador Shafila has mentioned, is the people because the election that we have to, we are sometimes we lose the real meaning of election. Election is the process through which the people give the mandate to a particular political party to rule for a certain period of time. Here the key element or key point is the consent of the people as the basis of governance. So you have to understand that. Election is not for anything else. It is thus, it is a process through which the concept of the people is expressed. Unless this concept is freely, explicitly expressed or the people have that uh, authority or opportunity, uh, then you cannot say that the, the message or the mandate has been conveyed or had been delivered for some party or a combination of parties. So we have to understand that democracy is essentially is a system run based on the consent of the people. So people should have the consent and they should have the options also. So that is how democracy works. Now until and unless that uh, is there, then you can call it an election but that would not be credible because elections is not being held in Bangladesh. Uh, two weeks back or three weeks back, the election took place in Maldives, the government was changed. Nepal last year, the, the government was changed. Uh, India, the government is changed. So in the region, even Pakistan, I mean, you see, the, 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 if, if you look at, uh, in our look at the neighborhood, the, all these countries are having elections, people are participating, giving their verdict. Uh, so based on that, the government, new governments are coming or the existing government is continuing. Mm -hmm. Another issue I should also mention, in the modern state, accountability and transparency is a very important element because between two elections, mm -hmm. how does people exercise their oversight over the governance or government? Okay, thank you very much, Ambassador Humayun Kubir. will come to you again. Viewers, we're going for a short break and come to you again very soon. Thank you. Viewers, you are watching talk show Promise Bangladesh sponsored by Crown Cement and we have two giant discussions here. One is Mr. Humayun Kabir, Ambassador Humayun Kabir, other being Ambassador Shofiullah. Mr. Humayun Kabir, you know very well, you are Bangladesh Ambassador to US. So you have a tremendous experience about the mindset of American policymakers. Just before announce the, the, announce the schedule of election, Donald Lu, Western Secretary for Central and Asia, South Asian Affairs, sent a letter to three political parties mm. urging them to see it and negotiate what the problems are. And you know very well, being a citizen of Bangladesh, it is impossible between the two, for two political parties to sit and talk and negotiate. And that's why crisis fomented in such a manner that we are really helpless. How do you view the letters? Well, that is, uh, I would say, the last urging from their side. Because if we look at, if you go a little bit back, then we can understand that they have been talking about 
or urging the political parties mm -hmm. and talking about a free, fair, inclusive or participatory peaceful election. They've been talking it for quite mm -hmm. some time. And very, during the last, say, one year, a large number of US uh, uh, dignitaries visited Bangladesh. And every one of them actually re reiterated this message that they expect Bangladesh to have a free, fair, and peaceful election. Because, as they mentioned, mm -hmm. that Bangladesh's future would be dependent on how best the election would be. And as a, as a part of that series, I think the last one, before the schedule was announced, Donald Lu, Eastern Secretary of State Donald Lu, sent a letter to the major, three major political parties and urging them to come, discuss, and find out a peaceful environment for holding the next election. Uh, if you ask me why the Americans are doing that, I think they have mentioned that. that and some uh, uh, one journalist asked one of their dignitaries a question. Uh, what is your standard of election or what do you expect in the election? They said whatever the people of Bangladesh expect, that's our standard. So, I mean, very simple. That's what their expectation is. It's, if it's, and they are also saying that we are not supporting this party or that party. We don't have any, a, any preference on the outcome. What we are talking about, we are talking about the process. So they are talking about the process only. Whatever people decide, that would be, the accept, that would be acceptable to them. So here, a couple of things I should mention. And since you have mentioned, I had the opportunity to spend some of my time there. A couple of things are important. The Americans understand very well that Bangladesh uh, is essentially, the people have the democratic urge, strong urge, mm -hmm. that we have demonstrated, as Shufi has mentioned, in 1971. We fought for securing our democratic rights. That's why we fought. That's one of the elements, major elements that drove us, that motivated the whole nation. Now they are thinking that if there is another election, that Bangladesh democracy would be mortally hard. And that they think that as a friend, as a partner, they have a responsibility. That's what they are saying all the time. And second thing is, we are, a, we are basically economic partners, as Shofi has rightly mentioned. I would add to what Shofi has said. Number one country in terms of remittance is now the United States. So what does it mean? It means that this remittance will continue to grow. Why? Because the people who are sending money are, are almost permanently residing there. And the economy is stable. So this is a major source we have to look at. Bangladesh is now making transition in 2026. We'll have to have a lot of reforms, including attracting more foreign investment to Bangladesh. At this time, the largest foreign investor in Bangladesh is the United States. And I can tell you from my modest or humble exposure, the Americans are the ones who, ha who have the capacity to invest in a big way. Our entire Bay of Bengal, we are talking about uh, blue economy. How many countries have come so far since 2014? How, many, how much we have invested during the last 10 years time? Now, the Americans are showing interest in that, either in hydrocarbon, or other things, and Americans are talking, they are ready to give us some help. 13,000 students have gone last year to the United States for higher studies. So that's a destination for the younger generation. And for us, whether they come back or stay there, these are our assets. Technology, Bangladesh is now, we need to upgrade our economy. How do you do that? We have to go for innovation and use of more technology. Where do we get from that? So the America is the largest source of that, and they're most generous. They will give you, and they have a, at least a format. I mean, many countries don't follow that format. So for many reasons, I think we, we have to also think about or take note of what they are saying. I, I will give two more uh, uh, points b before I conclude. Who gave the largest amount of vaccines, COVID, corona vaccines <coughs> for us? It's the Americans. Who came to our support when we were suffering uh, a cyclone hit us during 2007, Cedar? It was the Americans who came forward. Because I was at the field, so I know for sure. And uh, I was asked, should we accept this offer? I say, do you have any other alternative offer? Well, no. 
So do you think that a good friend when he's coming or offering you something you should accept? He said, yes. I said, then accept. And I accepted not one single person died after that operation started. So you have to understand and from a global perspective also I should say, we need friends. We don't need enemies. We are, we are a country, Bangladesh, modest country, a huge population, but capacity wise, national capacity wise, we are still modest. So we need friends and we need to listen to friends to build up the bridge, not to break the bridge. Thank you very much. Ambassador Shofiullah, the most pertinent question is, we need friends, either the West or East or whatever it is. But nowadays it is very clear that what America is doing, the China is opposing it, Russia is opposing it. Mm -hmm. India to some extent is having the balance between the two. But America is America. Still it is the torch of humanity, it is the torch of democracy and torch of development also. And our future to some extent lies in America because 13,000 students last year went to America. It means they are sending foreign currency and permanent foreign currency and so many things are there. And do you think the America should play a role to find a negotiator or get involved in negotiation to overcome the stand still at this very moment in Bangladesh? Thank you. My simple answer is no. Because we do not wish to involve uh, maybe the most benefit you are getting out of America. Still we will say no. Because you see it is internal. Our own, we are sovereign nation. Why we will we are not at war with any river that we need someone to mediate. That is not the question. We yeah. are not in a position even to settle it at no, home. No, then no, what can be done? Internal. In internal matter, we need uh, support, advice. Uh, it's, it's all right. But uh, to come itself here and to negotiate between the Aumalik and BNP, that is not welcome in any way. It was tried and failed, uh, Commonwealth and the uh, UN did a fail and even two secretary generals of the two parties also failed. See, so that is tested. Uh, we don't need any foreign hand here. We can solve our own problem provided we just open our mind a bit. You see, uh, we should not, again here I should mention that I feel the government, this uh, position, hard position government took uh, is because they feel that there are three powers behind them. One is India, one is China, one is Russia. So if we have these three powers behind me, uh, then why I should care for negotiation of any other people? That has been proved wrong in BRICS election. The, in BRICS, we became uh, applicant. We wanted to be a member to show to the people of Bangladesh that look, we have three friends, we want uh, the membership. Yeah. But it, we are not even sponsored by any of the three, three, three uh, so-called friends. It has, we should understand from this experience that in, in uh, industrial affairs, it is the basic interest of each country that guides them to, 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 how, to what extent they will support you. That is basic interest of international uh, any country. See, so that's why I'm saying we should. And whoever ca will come and negotiate, they will have their own interest ultimately. So why we should expose ourselves to negotiate a third country in a, in a matter which we can solve ourselves? Mm -hmm. So uh, I should again say that there are any a, another difference between the Western support and our neighboring country, India. Neighboring uh, Western countries and Japan, uh, 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 Korea included, and the people of Bangladesh, we want free, fair elections. And here, the, this country is saying we don't support any, any, any party of Bangladesh. We also want a free, fair election because we are a democratic country. We are a development partner of Bangladesh. We are, we are answerable to our own constituency. We are answerable to uh, Congress. Or somebody will say diet, uh, or somebody will say that other um, uh, parliament parliament houses. We are 
giving Bangladesh so much of facilities, uh, quota free, duty free access to many things of what in return you are getting. We do not want anything in return from Bangladesh or any third world countries. We want them to stand their own feet and to be a democratic country which is the aspiration of their people. Here, the people of Bangladesh, we want a free fair elections. It is so <laughs> happily coincided with the Western or other countries. But we want ourselves. Even the government who is ruling now, they came through fair election in 2008. Had there been a rigging in that election, they would not have been in power. But this government, what they did, they closed the door for free elections after winning 2008 elections. That's the problem we are facing now. And it will continue. It will be a snowball effect if there's a the free election, fair election, ex election which is not mm. acceptable by the people. Okay. This, this should be the issue. I, I, I will come to you. Thank, Thank you very much uh, for your Thank you. straightforward discussion. Thank you. Well, viewers, we're going for a short break. Please keep watching. We are back again and we are having talks. Promising Bangladesh is sponsored by Crown Cement. And we are having talks with two brilliant diplomats in Bangladesh. And they are Mr. Humayun Kabir and Mr. Shofiullah. Mr. Humayun Kabir, you are a student of political science, also teacher of political science. So my expectation to you is very <coughs> high. Can you tell me, should there be an angel from the heaven to act as a negotiator in Bangladesh, or should our military BNP understand practically there are no other ways open to us accepting dialogue between the two parties? <laughs> Thank you once again. I think uh, we need to understand it ourselves, and I fully agree with what Ambassador Sophia Lavai has mentioned that we don't need somebody else from outside to come and advise us or interfere into because that hurts our dignity. We have to understand that. So we have to find a solution. Let me give you an example. I was in Nepal, so was I was Ashofir Lavai. Mao is for 10 years of war in Nepal. Through negotiations between the mainstream political parties and Maoist, the solution was found. Remember, they were fighting a war for 10 years. 13,000 people were killed by the Maoist, and most of them were the other size leaders. Even in that kind of environment, they came, they had dialogues, cons I mean, uh, discussions, and they came out from that crisis through dialogue and peaceful solution. And today, the Nepali Prime Minister, he's the third time Prime Minister who was the leader of the Maoist movement. So you understand what I mean? There is no problem in the solution, uh, no, no problem in the world that cannot be solved. And this is our problem. I mean, I think we had in 1991, they have agreed, they worked together, they solved pr problems. Uh, now we have a problem, it is their responsibility because the political parties are the link between people and power. So that is their solemn responsibility to allow the or to reflect the aspirations of the people. So I think it is, they should do it. And I am still I am optimistic, still I am hopeful that as Shavilava has said rightly, that they would be a little open to each other. That would be helpful for restoring a peaceful environment through which an inclusive election, credible election, celebratory election can be had in Bangladesh. If it is not so. Then we have difficulty. Then we have difficulty. I can, I don't need to explain it too much because our history itself uh, has a lot of evidence for that. So I would invite them to just think a little bit what could happen. In 2000, I can give you some historical evidence. 2007, 10,000 Kenyans were killed as a result of the election, post election violence. Cote d'Ivoire, another country in Africa, were divided and even peacekeeping had to go to restore peace there and Bangladeshi peacekeepers were also there. So I hope that as a dignified nation, we have to, I'm not saying that we should take lessons from there, but these are some of the things that should give, some, give us some understanding about the consequences of not having uh, 
uh, I would say a participatory inclusive election. And coming to another point I should like to, there is also an issue of morality of governance. This country was based, this country, we fought for this country on moral issue. They were wrong, we were right. We fought for, we fought on the right side of morality. The Pakistanis were wrong because they, they did wrong things. So we are standing for, I mean, safeguarding our right thing and, and our and being issue. a freedom fighter. How do you feel all these things? You are a freedom no, I, fighter. I feel, I feel it, it hurts me when somebody else comes from outside and tells me do this or that and some questions about whether, why somebody else should talk about our sovereignty issue. It's our solemn responsibility to protect it, to uphold it. It's our duty as a citizen, everybody's leadership, citizens, everyone, as in 1971, everyone was fighting, the whole nation fought. <coughs> so that gives us, that should give us some lesson that what should be our role during in a difficult time. Now let me tell you why should you mentioned earlier, uh, let me add also, <laughs> why international community is important for us. Let us forget about Bangladesh. We know that China, United States and China are the two largest economies. US with 26 trillion dollar GDP, China with 19 trillion dollar GDP. So they are not very far from each other. Last week on 15th of this month, Xi Jinping flew to San Francisco to attend APEC meeting. And although it was an APEC meeting, the centerpiece of the meeting was meeting between President Biden and President Xi Jinping. And I can tell you I was pleasantly surprised and also it's a kind of learning for us. Xi Jinping went there, he met 200 American business community people who, who bought the ticket to join the dinner with him. And there he said that please trust us. China is open, China will welcome you, please come. China is the be best place for investment. The, what, to me what was important was China realizes that the Americans have still some leverages which they need to utilize. They need investment and he said we need investment, we need technology, we need the entrepreneurial capacity uh, from the US. So Xi Jinping, the Chinese president realizes that he needs US as a partner. So I, I think I should stop here so you understand. I mean, we should also understand. I mean, these are some of the signals that we see the whole, what is happening in the outside world. And we are a part of the international community. We cannot stay away from that. There are 193 member countries at the United Nations. We are one of them. Beyond us, there are 192. So we have to go with 192. If we think that we will stay alone, then we are out of that. And that would have consequence. I hope that Bangladesh during the last 52 years, we have been working very nicely with the international community. And in fact, our development was a, largely a function of our collaboration with them. And if you notice during the last few months, our connectivity with the international community is getting complicated. I do not think that's the right thing to do because we are graduating we are moving from one layer of economic status to another, which would be much more complicated. And we need more support from the international community, not less. And if we lose the connectivity, how are we going, going to get those, or going to get those, uh, I mean, uh, support from th those friends? So we have to be cool-headed, think about it. Yeah, I understand the politicians have their own priorities, but if they think about the interest of Bangladesh as a whole, which we call in our term national interest, then perhaps they may have a different perspective. Thank you very much. Ambassador Shafiullah, mm -hmm. Ambassador Humayun Kabir utter a single word, national mm -hmm. interest and leadership. Sure. And we feel that Bangladesh is suffering mm -hmm. from lack of leadership also, crisis of leadership also. And the present scenario is nothing mm -hmm. but the result of the debacle of the leadership in Bangladesh. So what is your understanding? Well, thank you. Um, leadership is not allowed to grow in the country. Because, the, as I said, two family system 
become two political party system now. Mm -hmm. So it is within the two families. Now you see uh, the founder of the party, the current mm -hmm. chairman and the crown prince, the next chairman uh, of the one political party. This is line up, you see the, their houses, the uh, walls. In another party, uh, stop short of one thing, the founder, the current and the mm -hmm. Next, we also we must talk about son or daughter, or but it is uh, not definitely outside the family. This is the way leadership is blocked. See, that's the one point. The if, if you come into the this this it, how to resolve this what is happening now, I can really we can also agree. Who I also agree that that the ego. Uh, is playing more than the rational, more than the national interest, which we mentioned. National interest, ego is predominantly playing in the in the, in the political field now. Mm -hmm. So to overcome this ego, dialogue may not take place. But it is with the, with, within the power of the government to remove the net it spread uh, for the election. If they remove this, allowing the free, free, free uh, uh, election to and to go smoothly that is one option without dialogue we remove this thing the placing of the administration uh, in the in the in the country uh, to what i mean election uh, mechanism uh, to remove this because they are standing away of the free elections, so they should they know what they net they place around the country. If they of their own, they remove this thing, and without dialogue, free uh, election, fair election could be, could be held. So that's the one point. Mm -hmm. Another point is, unfortunately, uh, we have to depend on a, a force in Bangladesh which is most respected, honored, and trusted by everybody in Bangladesh, that is the army. Army can play a peacetime role, which is already there in aid of civilian and aid. Uh, army could take over the conducting elections. It will be done by the election commission, but it will be aided by the our defense services, uh, army forces. Police will go to their own, own police station only. They will be called in if they, ne they feel the necessary. They should not be in the around the elections because <coughs> the uh, what is, what had happened last two years, uh, last two elections, people are know the what the forces is the hindering in the in the, uh, the uh, pre 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 elections. So the, there are two propositions. I think one is the government by itself remove these hard hurdles against the pre elections or the peacetime role of the army to hold a free and fair election whom everybody in Bangladesh trust them. You see, they are doing a good job abroad. They have earned uh, international acclamation for their role in the, uh, in the conflicting zone in around the world. So why not, when your country is facing such a conflicting situation, you play your own peaceful role here under the civil government, everything will be set, everything uh, as it is. Only they will conduct the elections and the police will be outside the election process. So this is, is the uh, way uh, I think will be acceptable to the people. Otherwise, what will happen? It will be a, a conflict in situations. The conflict, we have seen election conflict, it could be so dangerous and as a result of that, 1971, we had a diversion war because Pakistan did not accept the elections, free fair elections, did not accept it. So we had the diversion war, we had the Bangladesh, <coughs> a great sacrifice we made for that. Thank you very you much. Uh, so this Ambassador is the way to prevent this conflict situation, to have a peaceful election, we have to. What is the, purely in the hand of the government now to remove these obstacles or to have the peaceful uh, army will conduct for the uh, okay, thank, thank you very much, Ambassador Shafiullah. Oh. Ambassador Humayun Kubi, what is your mm. last comment? Well, I think politics doesn't need to be a life and death issue. 
politics is an art of compromise. As we have learned, you have learned, we have learned as a student of political science. So let it be that way. And if you cannot solve the problem yourself, let the people decide what we call mm -hmm. expand the agenda. Include the people so that they can give a verdict and they will decide. So that's the, I think that's the best option. <laughs> that is how democracy should, uh, should be run. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Humayun Kabir and Ambassador Shafiullah. We are about to end this talk show. And before ending this talk show, I would like to summarize what, the, what has been uttered by the two guests. Two guests utter so many things, and they are of the same mind and views that Bangladesh should move towards democracy. For the democracy, there should be initiative. Initially, first from the government, initially from the opposition. If the opposition political parties and the party in power do not feel that they should sit together, who are the people to come here? That's why America is again, again urging the Bangladesh, all the political leaders, you see, please, you come together, sit together, and settle the issues in questions. If it is not possible on the part of the political leaders, the future of democracy and fate of the Bangladesh is not so high, not so promising. Although we believe we have better future, and also it is believed by Ambassador Humayun Kabir and also Ambassador Shafiullah. And with this belief, let us say goodbye.